Hey, welcome all. Well, I got this tire here on the rear. And it's a slow leak. And it's just really annoying. It goes flat about every six days, I think. So what I'm going to do, switch it out. I bought another tire on eBay. Seems to be pretty good. Well, actually, the rim does much better than this one. But it's cold out here, so I'm going to move the car over to the sun and see how cold it really is. Let's start it up. And looky there. Okay, as soon as the temperature comes up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and move it and get to the tire. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this uncap off first. It's really easy to do, screwdriver. These are 19 millimeter. Don't have a impact socket right now, so I'm going to use a, a regular. I just <laughs> just wanted to break them loose. They're on at 100 foot pounds, and obviously I didn't want to take them all the way off. So I'm going to go ahead. And, since they come off that easy, I'm going to go ahead and put the tire in the air. Before I take them off. Alright, let's see if all the other ones are that easy. Okay, the lug nuts are off. Time to take the tire off. Pretty easy to do. Big difference in tires as you can see. Now the one on the right's got some tread but leaks air so fast they either got a rim leak, valve stem leak, or a puncture somewhere. So I will try and figure out where that's coming from and if I can put it back on and fix the leak of course uh, I will do so because that tire right there is it's seen better days. But it holds air really well. So We'll see what happens. Time to put the tire back on now. They require 100 foot-pounds of torque. I'm going to do that when the tire's on the ground. What I found out about these run-flat tires is you can run for 200 miles at 55 miles an hour when they're flat, but then you'd have to replace the tire and you can run for short distances at 55 miles an hour and then probably be able to repair the tire. Um, the fronts are smaller than the back and they're designed not to be interchanged from, well of course front to back will not work, but not even to be switched from side to side. That's what I know about these run flat tires for now. The speed rating on them, I forget what it was but it's right on up there over a hundred and some miles an hour anyway. Okay, tire's back on. Time to put them down to torque. Alrighty, they're all down to torque. Now to put the hub cap on and cute little hub caps. A lot of people don't seem to care for these rims and they change them out with newer ones, but I really kind of like them. So now that I got this tire off, I'm going to see if I can find the slow leak. What I like to do before I even check for leaks is to air the tire up. Usually I put five pounds more in it. I've done more than that before, but I just want to over inflate it a little bit because the slow leak is... Uh, can sometimes be hard to find. And then I'm going to spray the tire with some uh, the soap that I use for checking leaks. This is a soap I use for checking propane leaks, but I have mixed up uh, dishwashing liquid and water because it bubbles quite a bit and used it before. First thing I'm going to do is to check the valve stem. Sometimes the valve core will be leaking and you can just replace that. A lot of times uh, 
and put a little spit on the end of the stem and you could see if it's leaking when you air your tire up. But that's the first place I'm going to check. And then I'm going to proceed to check the entire tire and see if I can find where the slow leak is. A lot of times you need to leave the spray on for a few seconds to make sure it has a chance to catch some bubbles. If it's a real strong leak, it'll show up right away. If it's not, uh, it'll take a minute or two for the bubbles to appear, but I don't see anything going on there, so... Okay, I'm going to go around the whole tire doing the same procedure and see if I can spot any leaks. See a nail right here. The screw's the worst. So I can see a leak right here and right here. The rest of these are just normal bubbles. They're not doing anything. At first you might think that they are, but they're not. You can see them. A real leak will have a whole bunch of tiny little bubbles that will just keep coming. I'm going to go ahead and let the air out of the tire. So I think I'm going to start with that bad one first. What makes these run flat tires so special is their reinforced sidewalls here and if the leak was in the sidewall I would not even try and patch it. I am hoping that the center here where the leaks are here and here they're more like a conventional tire and I guess I'm going to find out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove both of these uh, problems. A little tiny screw. There's one. Sometimes it can be difficult to remove these things that are in your tire, and you might need different sets of tools. Now, I thought this was a nail. It turns out it's a screw, and they can be difficult to pull straight out. They're easier to unscrew, and it's going in like this, like that. That's what's left of the drywall screw. Okay, now both of these holes have to be reamed out. They make different tools. I like the ones with the handle. It makes it easier. But this is a job, let me tell you. A lot of times you can... There you go. And you just... It moves a lot of rubber. makes it easier for the patch to fit. This one's going to be problematic, I'm sure. This is work. Okay, let's patch a hole. We're going to patch this one right here. What I'd like to do first is put a little rubber cement down the hole. And uh, I usually get a can of rubber cement. And then I have 
have some tire plug strips here. And these are pretty old, but they're still gooey. I don't keep them in the sun. And I take a strip and I thread it through. Not as hard as threading a needle, but it can be, it can fight you. And you get a hold of it. Sometimes I use my pliers or something. But, about halfway like that. And I take my rubber cement and I goop it up really good. And this is the hard part. You force it down in there. That looks pretty good. About an inch, three quarters. And then they then you pull this back up. And the plug stays most of the time. Same procedure on this hole. Got my strip started already. I like to goop it up really good. Helps it slide in the hole better and I do believe it makes a better seal. One other thing left to do is to cut these ears off. I have used a razor knife in the past. And I have found that I can be here a while with a razor knife. Sometimes. I've also used a pair of uh, wire cutters or dikes. Just go in it like that. And you're done. So instead of doing all that sawing, I might be able to get two at one time. There. Now as you drive, or as I drive, these will wear down. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna air this tire up. Alrighty then. I aired it up to 35. And, time to check for leaks. What you're looking for is little tiny bubbles that just keep coming. And I don't see any anywhere. This is just a plain old soap. Bubbles that I made spraying it on. Thank you all for watching, thank you all for subscribing, and until the next video, this is Cars, Trucks, and Detours, a.k.a. Steve AZ 711 Bye for now.